Welcome to meeting number six. I'm going to get you started here. So just a little review for those of you that weren't here last week, kind of where we started. We had some time for some Q&A. We reviewed our master plan voting results. We came up with those top three preferred. We took a look at uh, potential sites with those master plan options. And then we threw up this acronym LFI. Locally Founded Initiatives, we talked a little bit about that. I gave you some homework on that, actually, to take a look at those um, examples and have some conversation. We're going to spend, obviously, more time tonight kind of going over that. Uh, this is our website. We talk about this every week. We have updated it with all of last week's material. So if you weren't here, you can go on there and stay informed and keep up with us. I know there's a lot on there. I know that. It gets overwhelming. But um, we want to try to give everything we're talking about on there for people to take a look whenever they want. So we're going to continue with that here as our meetings um, continue on. So let's talk a little bit about what you're going to see tonight. Um, we're going to start off with the master plan options with sites and some of the voting results that, that we did. Remember, you got your phone out. We're doing some quick hitters there. We're going to talk about that. Miss Emily is actually going to get the podium and follow. Um, so you're going to talk about that LFI type piece. I'm going to jump back in and we'll talk about the community partners and opportunities. Um, I gave you some homework on that too. I hope you knew what that meant. Um, so I'm going to kind of lead that conversation a little bit. We're going to turn it over to Ms. Cheryl, who's going to talk about what you're going to do in your group discussions. Our goal tonight is to get you in groups and have you kind of go at it a little bit and be able to report out. Okay, so last week we were here a ton. It's going to be vice versa tonight. We're going to be out back in our small groups during the day. Talk a little bit about next meeting. And then at the end, we're going to have time for Q&A, okay? At the end, and that's purposeful. We have a lot to get done. So we're going to go at it initially here. Hopefully when we get done, we have 10 or 15 minutes at the end to be able to do uh, some Q&A. All right, so that is our game plan moving forward. So let me welcome Ms. Emily here, and uh, she'll take the reins. Thank you. As Mr. Null shared, so last meeting, last week, we had um, everyone vote on just preferences towards some of the sites that were applied to the um, top three preferred master plans that we had narrowed down to. We went through it quickly, so we just wanted to pull up those results again, because we're going to talk about it a little bit in more depth uh, today, tonight at our meeting. So the first one was the preferred site for a PK through 8 school. So as you can see, although Hilltop was 39%, which was the top, it was very close margins with Shields Road, which was 37% as the preference. And in addition to that, we still had 24% that wanted to explore a non-district owned site. So what's this telling us is we, we do need to talk a little bit more about that. PK3, why, you know, pros and cons of each of those, why we feel that way, um, and then exploration around that non-district owned sites, and if there's ideas and thoughts around there that, that folks had when we wanted to get that. Because again, remember last week was just a pulse to see where to see where you all were leaning towards. So we will dive into this specifically in the PK through eight plan uh, tonight. For the five through eight, um, the preferred site was the middle school, the west of the existing school, and that was pretty substantial at 61%. The uh, new PK through four school, Hilltop, was the preference at about 67%. So again, pretty substantial margins in that case. And then we had the new PK through six school, um, Hilltop, again, at 74%. Um, so again, we wanted to use this as a guide, as a pulse, so that as we're going through, we can then um, associate some of the costs. There were cost implications with some of the sites that we were talking about. So now that we have a sense of which school is associated with what site, we can then apply those um, costs as well. So we will, again, as we talk about part of our group exercise today, we'll be looking at these a little bit more in depth and talking about those among your groups. So local funded, locally funded initiatives, Cheryl touched on um, last week. We looked at, again, what is included in the OFCC school-based plan and what are optional things that we can add on to at additional cost. 
So we did a breakdown of that list here, as Mr. Knoll shared, that was um, communicated out in your homework. We did an itemized list here as far as what spaces could be considerations to be incorporated in each of the plans, and then which plans were impacted by those. So again, part of your group discussions tonight will be looking at the three different plans um, that we are exploring. What local in funded initiatives do we want to include in there, and how does that impact the overall cost? Do we want to do all, some, what are the reasons why? Um, and as we narrow down, um, you know, again, we, um, as we'll get into for the group discussion, we're, look, we're going to be looking at the whole master plans, each three of those, with all of those line items factored in, including the local funded initiatives. So that was a quick kind of overview as set up. We're going to get into those a little bit later, but real quick, we're going to move into community partnerships. Full disclosure here, I'm, I'm passionate about this. And I'm interested in what you all have to say tonight, okay? Um, if, as you remember, one of our guiding principles way back in the beginning was foster community engagement. How can we get our community connected with these new facilities? Specifically, it was serve as a community hub. All right, now, if, if you go outside of Canfield, there are school districts that have done this and have done it very well, okay? Cheryl's going to run over some of those in show you that we had a question that I want to speak to that kind of sum that up the question was this what features of a new building or upgrade might entice members of the voting public who don't have kids coming to school to vote for a bond issue okay and then there were some like can a facilities committee work on adding this to the list well just so you know we got a lot of people that already ran out our buildings classrooms uh, people take our auditorium we have a lot of dance and music folks that come in um, cafeteria gets rented out a lot so a lot of that is already happening within the building itself okay but I guess my, my whole thing is this what is out there community partner wise that we could bring to Canfield in our school district I'll give you a good example here's one that I like why don't we talk about the why coming to Canfield or some type of wellness center Okay. What's that look like? Is that something we can pull up? There's a great guy named Tom Gacy. Anybody know Tom? Yeah. Okay, great guy. I've talked to him numerous times. Um, he's like the CEO, head, head uh, guy with, with the Youngstown line. They are willing to talk to Canfield about bringing a Y here. And I know you beat me to the punch probably years ago. Six years ago. Okay, six years ago. Exactly. That, that got for me. Okay, that conversation is happening. So, if that's something you guys talk about tonight, say, well, you know what, man, Mr. No might have a point there. Maybe there's some merit to that. I want those conversations to, to, to happen. Um, you know, as superintendent, I'm looking at how do we get people who don't have kids right now connected to the school? Like, why vote yes, right? What's in it for me? So, I love the why idea. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you a great school district uh, where I grew up in Lake. Lake High School Middle School has one of the best setups I've ever seen. They have a high school middle school. They have a library connected to that building. They have a Y connected to that building. Um, it's, it's amazing. And this was probably, I don't know, 20 some years ago, maybe. It's been a long time. And I'm sure there's other ideas out there. But uh, that was a great question that, that somebody asked. So. I wanted to lead with that for you all tonight. Remember, this was one of our guiding principles, too. How can we get this going here in Canfield? Okay, so I want you all talking about that a little bit later. Now, I'm going to send over Cheryl here, who's going to actually kind of walk you through some projects. Yeah, some project examples. And really, there's two approaches to this. You can have a partner and build extra space, and who pays for that extra space could be determined for that partnership. or you can be creative on how you can use spaces that you already build in your co-funded project for outside partnerships. So the first one we want to talk about is the Willoughby East Lake City School District. This was a huge monumental project in this district. One new South High School was part of many other portions um, of the overall project. It was in the hundreds of millions um, of dollars for this project. But uh, key takeaways of this, 
partners, three, three entities, school district, YMCA, senior center, came together. Um, school district was like, we need to replace South High School, but boy, we really, really would love a pool for our swim team. This, it's really hard for school districts to operate and maintain the schools. That's where the largest, ex, uh, the pool, that's where the largest ex expenses. The YMCA simultaneously was saying, we need to replace the Willoughby Y East End, it's called YMCA. Um, and, you know, it, there's a lot of cost in building pools. How can we do that? City was saying at the same time, we need a new senior center. We need gym space, activity space, therapy space, and all these things. And it, I swear, it was like the stars aligned for the school district that these conversations started simultaneously. Um, and they all started talking together and realized there were synergies between each of these projects. And that if they came together collectively, they could actually do this. Whereas if they each went independently and built these individual spaces, it was much more costly to each party. Long story short, school district built the pool the construction of the pools for the YMCA. YMCA pays now through their, their uh, lease and joint use agreement operating the pools. Community can use it, YMCA. There's time set aside for the school district to use for the swim team. Senior Center now has access to this massive field house that contains all the gym spaces that they normally would have constructed independently, but now can build it together into this one large space at a much cheaper cost per square foot. I will just say one thing with YMCA, um, you just, just as, not a caution, but just know typically they do not um, take loans for a project. They typically rely on fundraising, but because this project was moving so fast, I do believe, I'll have to double check, there was some loans taken out in order to expedite this and keep in line with everybody else's schedule. Um, so just knowing that sometimes it may take uh, a longer time span than normal to plan a project of this uh, magnitude. Same school, Willoughby East Lake South High School. This is now on the polar end example. This is a partnership with Mitchell's Ice Cream. We need to get Mitchell's Ice Cream to come to partner with us in our office, right? Um, where they didn't, school district didn't have to build any additional space. The project was um, planned and designed to have a serving style to the, ser to the students as a scramble type style. So you have salad bar, you have pizza bar, a variety of different bars. After the school is even constructed, Mitchells came along and said, hey, we'd love to be one of those and you know parts of the scramble bar. And the school district said, this would be great. Kids love ice cream. But it goes further beyond that. So they took over one of the scramble areas. Now the students have the opportunity to run the Mitchell's ice cream scramble bar, the back portion of the, of the scramble bar, learn about marketing, learn about business, learn about sales, learn about food service, gain these life skill knowledges that adults typically would have at no cost to the school district no extra space or expense. Brexview, Broadview Heights City School District came to a master plan finalization to consolidate four elementary schools into one elementary school. Um, at the same time, after they finalized, the city said, you know, we're going to build some gym space, some rec space. We know you're putting a new elementary school on the ballot. How can we combine these efforts and create a joint use space for both of our entities and parties. And that's what they did. They combined the dollars um, and expense towards a multi-court field house, same thing at Willoughby South, and were able to construct this large field house that has dedicated courts at certain times for each party, open to the community at other times, at a much less cost per square foot. Again, this one was um, just like the Mitchell's ice cream. This partnership came into play after the master plan was finalized, but before design was finalized. Uh, I think we have two or three more examples. Richmond Heights City School District Upper School. It was a 7 through 12 facility. Again, they came to a consensus master plan. We know what we want to do. We want to uh, build a new school for grades 7 through 12. After they had the committee and the district came to that consensus, the library said, hey, you know what? 
you know, we're looking to replace our existing library. We don't need a huge amount of space. We were looking at ways to operate more efficiently. You know, can we talk about how we can partner in this together? And they did. They came to an agreement to build a joint use library between the school and the community. Now, the population that serves this area is relatively small, so I do need you know, to preface that. Um, but they came to an agreement, and the great thing with this project is that the library came with money that says, we'll build the space, let's use it together, you operate it, we'll, you know, so opposite of Will and Peace Lake, um, and let's see how that, how that, you know, let's, let's try this out. It worked out great. The school district was able now to take the square footage that it was originally allocated in the master plan for their library, now that the community, uh, Cuyahoga County Library was paying for the new space, and spread that amongst their academic spaces to enhance those spaces and augment them. Um, so very successful project there. <coughs> and lastly, uh, North Ridgeville Academic Center. This is a three through eight school in North Ridgeville, mm -hmm. consolidation of multiple schools into this one. Another example of how you don't need to necessarily build extra space. Um, they did have an extra gym, like we're talking about for Canfield Village Middle School, but it was intended that all the gym spaces combined to collectively together could be used for the community as well as um, support spaces around that uh, for the community during the evening. So this example really just shows how we were thoughtful in design on how to create a separate community entrance for the evening hours, um, adjacent to the public spaces that were being used in the evening, which essentially were the gym and the weight room, as well as the board office, which is way up here. Um, but I can tell you, so the beauty of this is it keeps uh, the community from coming into the spaces that are academic spaces that aren't to be entered um, in non-school hours, uh, keeps them in the direction and filtered into the spaces that they are allowed to use, heavily used space. I've been there many times in the evening for board meetings, people coming and going, the city uses it for practice for their basketball um, leagues and so forth. Again, um, they did choose to build an additional gym, but even without that, they intended that the space would be used by the community. Any quick questions before we move on? Go ahead. North Ridgeville, don't they have like, a huge levy they're trying for? They are an extremely growing district, and if I remember correctly, their high school and their elementary schools for grades PK to two, two or three, um, are very undersized for the growth that has happened in that city over the last 20 years, and that is what is on the ballot. So it's for new high school. So this would stay? Oh, yeah, that would stay. Mm -hmm. That was a good question. Okay, so as Mr. Knoll, Emily alluded to, we're gonna go into group, group work in a few minutes. Um, and are the handouts passed out? Here and back. Here in the back. Okay, so let me summarize what you're going to be doing in this activity and the handouts that you will have. Emily mentioned, you know, we talked about the LFIs as homework. Some of them are optional. Some of them are related to uh, site selection. So we've taken the master plans, the three that you shortlisted, and included them here on the sheet. Nothing's changed since. The, the last few meetings. Uh, so you see the co-funded amount, this is what we've been looking at. And now that we're talking about layering on LFIs and those additional um, uh, costs that may be incurred or may not, um, down here below with a subtotal and then the total project amount, if you included all of those LFIs. For master plan two, this was your most, uh, highest voted short listed master plan and it had two site components. It had Shields Road and it had Hill Time. So this first printout that you will see and be looking at is for the Shields Road property. And you can see here, you know, we've talked about do we need additional gym space? Do we need to build a new board office or do we utilize an abandoned building such as Campbell for board office, right? That's something for you guys to talk about, think about as you're, you know, thinking about what the community will accept and the costs and everything. And, but this here, the site impact to building on Shields Road is something you really can't choose about 
but will also come into play in the overall cost of you deciding on which site. We've put together the soil issues with the traffic improvements um, together for there. You can see that total combined cost. What's our current maximum log allowance right now? Is Patty here? I don't, did the treasurer make it in? Ms. Patty, are you back here? What's our total amount of bond money that we can borrow right now? 109, I believe. 109. That's a great question. Same master plan, different site. This is the hilltop option. Again, we lose all those costs now on the LFIs associated to soils and traffic, though it's still unclear what <coughs> traffic impact improvements we need to do because the study hasn't been done. So please keep that in mind. In the survey that Emily outlined earlier, it was unclear. It was kind of spread across almost a third on the options, shields, hilltop, or explore a new site. So we don't feel like it's for us to take it off the table. It's for you to keep it or take it off the table. So we did include the line item for estimated cost of property acquisition, the Reese property, correct? Um, we have no idea. Negotiations haven't gone for, far enough to understand what that dollar value would be, but we had to apply some dollar value to that, so we landed on two. The second most favored or preferred master plan was master plan number one. Let me go over here so I can read it. <laughs> it was a new PK4, a new 5 through 8, and select renovations to Campfield High School. Same concept again. Everything that we've been talking about prior to these meetings, $105 million. And then the applicable LFIs. Um, so in the last meeting, it was very clear that the preference was if we build a new middle school on the existing middle school site, it was the west end of the property that was favored. Um, however, we just included, just so you're informed, if that really isn't the case and you think we just need to raise the existing middle school, move the students somewhere else temporarily, build on the existing footprint, what would that cost impact be? And that's the estimated cost at this point in time for trailers for a few years to relocate the students. And I must preface too, that's just for classrooms, restrooms, a few special ed programs, uh, classrooms, not a gym. Where would they have gym? Where would they have? Um, student dining. Um, so this is just for classroom space for the middle school enrollment. Again, that's elective. Um, we didn't want to eliminate it. It's up to you to eliminate it or keep it. And then finally, Master Plan 7, which was to build a new PK6 school and select renovations and additions at the high school to make it a 712 campus. Um, it's about $30 million for the 712 campus. Half of that is the $15 million select renovations um, that administration had um, outlined as a preference. And the other half would be for an addition for the 7 through 8 school uh, portion of the school. So we have our to total co-funded amount, which we've reviewed at last meetings. And then the um, eligible LFIs at this plan, uh, which would include a new board office if you want to construct it new. Perhaps you think we should reuse a, another building, like an existing building, like we talked about in the previous plan. And again, dependent, there's been a lot of conversation on where would that addition go. We're not in design yet, but just to know if you want to go north, these are some of the cost impacts to having to relocate and rebuild the softball field, the tennis, and the basketball courts. Could you go back on the slide? Yep. Numbers don't yeah. Add up. yeah, the final numbers are wrong. They're not adding up. The 105 and the 79 do not make one. Okay. Well, yeah. Emily has the Excel. Very catch. Very catch. This is supposed to be calculated automatically to eliminate. <laughs> this is the problem with artificial intelligence, <laughs> which isn't artificial, but Excel. <laughs> Excel. <laughs> yes. That addition for the plan seven, that was. The imagery showed something coming off the end then? Yeah, so we had showed it originally to the west, which wouldn't impact the, uh, the ball fields and the tennis courts. But there was some chatter, some conversation that perhaps it should go up to the north. 
And we just want to have full disclosure that if you go to the north, that's where the softball, the tennis courts, and um, what was the other thing? Basketball. Basketball, yes, are located. So two costs to roof. Which what? The basketball courts were just done. Oh, oh like, that, okay. The outside courts were just built like during COVID from parents. That's good to know. So if that is, like if that ends up being relocated, like, you know what I mean? It would need to be relocated or parents would not be there. I'll be very happy. No, they wouldn't. If we go to plan seven, um, so the new pre-K through six school, that is not, there's no determination of where that would go uh, on this plan. Um, um, it was in the survey last week okay. that we presented that earlier. Is at Hilltop. It, it was preferred at Hilltop, Correct. but with a large, a large preference. Well, that's what I was asking about. Like, so that price, does that include the Hilltop building, or that does that include is that? This is a, a brand new PK for six building on the Hilltop but, side. Like you may not have to spend that much money because you have the Hilltop building that you can incorporate in. So previous plans we have looked at that option and it was not favored. That was, I believe, one of the previous options. But let me double check. Okay. It was. Like, I think it was. Who said yeah, that? It was ran. It was ran. Okay. Yeah, and Hilltop. Unless I'm wrong, is there a softball field, tennis court? No, no, no. 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 There's, no there's there's this is for the high school. Yeah, so this is relative to the high school for yeah, You're adding the 70 high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there enough space on the staff parking lot to build that way? Well, there's uh, not east? room there, possibly, but where we're going to put that Oh, parking. no, I know. We'd have to move a parking lot yeah. somewhere else. I'm not 100% sure of perfect mentions, but I mean, okay. it's a decent space. Just curious. So I think Ellen's fixed the Excel spreadsheet. The Excel spreadsheet for? Yes, she already fixed it. Okay. Should have been yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had a question. No, you. Go ahead. To let him answer ask first. Okay, go ahead. I was just wondering the seven eight edition here, is that on here, is that just classroom? So we've looked at that, it's about thirty three thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. And it could be I mean we could slice and dice it many ways by how what we would use in the existing building or reprogramming the existing building. But just for the sake of ease of understanding, it could get you could get you um, a new gymnasium, a middle school one middle school gymnasium with locker rooms, your your uh, regular restroom space, your corridors, of course, mechanical and electrical space, and about, I think it was 15 classrooms, I actually wrote this down, I anticipated your question, <laughs> um, and about 15 classrooms. Now, that would average about 29 students per classroom, if you wanted to go down to um, really a more palatable amount of 25 students per classroom for that grade configuration, you need about 17 classrooms. But OFCC is, 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 is in their mindset, they're only giving you 33,000 square foot because they believe in their calculations that you have extra square foot in here to put some of those seven right. But Just so we're on the same page, so that 30 number does or does not include the addition of a middle school gym? The one gym that comes one with the middle school, typically, yes. And last question. Just a quick, Mr. Mull, question. Mm -hmm. People have talked about reusing one of the schools in some of these plans for like special ed or board office. Mm -hmm. If we use it for a special ed, that's would special ed fill up one, like say you use Hilltop or CH Campbell, would our current built or special ed program fit, use the whole space or would there be, um, I won't say a revenue source or state funding to bring in more special education kids from other areas that don't have that program to okay so that's a revenue. good double barrel question our current special ed population would fit in hip time okay the second piece of that if you're inquiring could we uh, bring in other special needs kids from around the county that's a whole different ball game but there's room there to do that um, if the district decided to go that way there is there's, you know, sometimes there's districts that don't have mm -hmm. The capability of or staff to bring in spe or have special ed in the school district that sometimes they go to another private school that might be able to treat other <coughs> housing. So I didn't know if that was. Well, you're you're getting close to my heart now because you guys know that, okay? Because I have a son in that world, and 
to me, anything we can do as a school district to keep our kids in house to me is worth the conversation. Just to your point, we do send some kids other places just because we don't have the staff or the, the room or whatever to house them here. Can I piggyback off of that? Because speaking from the staff elementary, especially where the special ed population is, if that's how we want to call them, um, they're typical kids, and I really don't like the idea of continuing the discussion of being them put in a separate building because if you were one of their parents, you would not like it, and they are one of our kids, and they are treated the same, and they are there. So I would just prefer we don't even go further with that discussion. Well, I mean, to his point, though, I mean, there are schools that are just special ed schools, right. and my son attends one of them. Right. I mean, I love for him to be with typical peers, but sometimes that's not an option just based on the need. To his point in mind, my thought would be instead of shipping those kids to a, a building in Austin Town, we're shipping them, those kids to Kids Link, which is a good place, by the way, um, if there's a way that we could house those kids in Canfield, I would much rather have that option than the other. I agree with that. I thought the way I was thinking of it was like we're going to take the kids inside of Hilltop and move them to their own place, and that I don't like. No, I don't, I don't, I don't like think you were that. heading that way, were you? No. Okay. No, no, was it, I just thought I'd bring it up because it was a discussion point that a lot of people kept bringing up. Right, yeah. We talked about that last round. Yeah, yeah. so just making sure everyone had the information. Yeah. With that said, first of all, great questions. Um, appreciate all of them. Um, we have updated the website. I, I don't know how many of the questions that are, are, there was a lot of questions, and we tried to answer all of them. I don't know how many are uploaded right now, but the answers, if they're not up now, are very shortly coming. Um, but we want to now spend the rest of the time in group work, work discussion. So we are on three plans, three shortlisted plans, which we've been on a week or two. Um, and now you have all the pieces and parts that <coughs> some items depending on the site, will additional cost may uh, be incurred, and others are elected. You can choose. Um, but now you have all the pieces. So let's go back again. This is why we haven't voted from three down to two up until this point, and we're, we're not voting again tonight on that. Uh, did you? We're going to hand out the numbers? For yes, the you're going to hand out the numbers, but what we want you to do to go to your tables, the, the, um, the goal is for you and groups to identify and record on your boards the strengths and the weaknesses of each plan. Now that you have all the pieces together, select your preferred LFI. So for like master, master, I can't remember the master plan number, the first preferred plan, the first one we talked about, you know, it, it, there may be some decisions there based based on site. They may be tied together. Others, like the board office, may not be. And then we layered on the discussion tonight about community partnerships with each plan. So we'd love for you to give us some feedback on what you all envision community partnerships to be in these schools, in these plans, um, how that could look, what type of spaces, what type of um, um, synergies you can see with other organizations within your community and then we will report out so Emily how long do we have for this so like a good 40 minutes right yeah good 40 minutes we'll report out and then we'll have our Q&A session after that are you giving us those sheets yes okay. they're already at the table no, we'll get the angry people there because those are the people we need to hear from and now <laughs> 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 I'm treated like they were ignorant. I think that's, that's come up in this
All right, table number eight. We're going to start reporting out everyone. So if we can have someone from table number eight, you can get started here. I know. <laughs> but we're pretty much all against one. Ten are in agreement that one is one. Okay, party. All right. Here we go. I think we're going to get a table number eight. And what we tried to do was to use the good. How about you? In terms of strengths and weaknesses, I was a reporter. You know, we, we, once we get talking, we we, uh, we lose track of time and we talk about a lot of different things. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see what's here. Um, option number two, which would be the very front page one uh, here on, on Shield. Uh, space, uh, property school loans, buildable space. Somebody on, on his, uh, at our group uh, mentioned uh, a potential partnership with the baseball club. Uh, somebody else asked if that area has become a JAG, which is a, uh, a joint economic uh, development. Um, I don't know what the last piece is, is, but um, you know to help uh, help defray or or help the, with some of the costs of the of the. Uh, the road <coughs> upgrades there. That, that was a big issue, the ODOT uh, requirements. Uh, we also thought about, you know, since we're going to the, tans the township, how that would affect the school resource mm -hmm. officer. It may not be uh, uh, you know, relevant to this discussion, but, you know, just something. Um, the tax issue would be a weakness, we feel. We're not sure how, how big of a weakness. Uh, you know, the total city budget is large compared, I believe, to how much uh, income tax would be lost uh, by building the school there. Uh, one point that I made the other day, I'm just going to say it again, is I think that it would be nice to have that space on Shields Road held in reserve for when we do build a new high school in 25 years. Um, the other option, number two, um, building a K-8 at Hilltop. Um, you know, traffic issues, I think the number that was thrown around was eight, over 1,800 kids. I don't know, I, I just can't, in my mind, picture that many more kids in that area and, and it working out. Um, also, um, we didn't know the answer to this, so this is more of a question, uh, even though I put it in a weakness um, column here. Uh, you know, would there be space there to provide for all the extracurriculars that seventh and eighth grade, you know, seventh and eighth grade, they have all the sports that high school kids have. Uh, you know, you're talking football and track, and you're talking uh, lacrosse, and would there be space there for those facilities? Uh, and, 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 and how much more cost would you be involved with that? Uh, but it, it's, it's full loan, and then we didn't want to lose sight of the fact that there was discussion of, of purchasing another site. And we wanted to uh, put this question up, uh, when, when, when is that something we're not considering anymore? When might that be uh, answered? Option one, and I know I'm taking a long time here, uh, building um, at the middle school site. You know, we've said before what a, what a nice location that is and in close proximity to the fire station and the police station. Um, but the bottom, the bottom line isn't, isn't a very friendly number, so too much money would be a weakness. Um, option number seven, um, a strength would be it would get it would get us to two buildings. Everybody at my table thought that going forward, the best thing for the district financially over time, maintenance costs, etc., would be to have two buildings, and then um, there could be traffic issues involved there. Anything else, fellas? The Y. The Yeah, we would we would push for any type of co-op with the YMCA. That that could be um, you know, 
revised. So, any questions? Thanks for listening. Have a day. Have a day. Have a day. Have a day. to Mr. Madison suggested we had a lot of contention in our group and perhaps didn't get through everything we wanted to, so I'll cover what we did. Uh, we tried to establish some common ground <laughs> and we kind of, I think, unanimously agreed that we least prefer option seven. Mr. Madison brought up some reasons there. Some things that uh, we were concerned about, the amount of gyms. Um, if we go with just the straight option seven, as a district, we're cutting down on the amount of gyms. We're going from two middle school to one middle school gym. Uh, and I understand that could be adjusted, but that was something we immediately thought of. Uh, and also, we'd be cutting down on the auditoriums. We're going from a middle school auditorium and a high school auditorium to just a high school one. Now, am I correct in that? Is the Oh, well, the middle school doesn't have one. That's correct. They have the little uh, the amphitheater. Kind of. Right, the stage. But it's kind of um, I actually, last week, I know that there's a lot of conjecture about how often middle school students are here, so I did a little independent research. I went to Mr. O'Donnell, the band director, and I went to Mr. Scourge, the choir director, and I went to Mr. Cochran, the athletic director, and I basically asked all three of them like, how often your middle school is here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the answer from all three of them was almost never. Um, the band director and choir director each said that middle schoolers are here maybe three, four, <coughs> maybe five days a year for the stage, for the auditorium primarily, right, for rehearsal and concerts. And the athletic director did say, you know, tracks here and um, cross countries here quite a bit. But if we're talking football, if we're talking basketball, if we're talking baseball, all those kind of big, big sports, they're very rare to hear. So that is something to consider, I think, if we're talking about merging middle school and high school, just the athletic facilities, which I know we can kind of adjust and outline and stuff like that, but something about parking. Another thing we talked about, overlap of students. I personally love the idea of consolidating schools. I just think with this building as it is, there would probably be some overlap with the grades. You know, I, I believe we'd be sharing cafeteria, and I know it'd be different times, but I believe we'd be sharing some facilities, and I could see where maybe the PR on that wouldn't be great. You know, some parents might have some issues with middle schoolers being around high schoolers and so on and so forth. The other issue I thought of, I can't recall, so if I remember it, or if you guys remember it, let me know. We'll keep going here. I think, and this was contentious, we generally preferred number two. We were still kind of torn on the uh, location. You know, in my opinion, and I think of some of our opinions, you know, either way you're dealing with traffic on both sites. I do kind of agree with Mr. Madison regarding Hilltop would be very congested as it is. Maybe the Reese property, if we could get that, could mitigate some of that, but you know, not a ton of information there. I live on Hilltop. And selfishly, if we put it there, maybe I get sidewalks. That was kind of a joke. <laughs> but that's kind of a joke. Um, so really hard to say things on both sides. Uh, community outreach, we didn't really get to. But one of the big concerns was if we do consolidate to two buildings, which seems like the plan. You know, what do we do with those lots? That could be a PR issue, uh, something we should probably be proactive with. Um, you know, the, the middle school lot, what do you do with? The CH lot, what do you do with? Just having a solid plan. Um, proper safety measures in regards to potential LFIs and community programs. Just, you know, if you tell parents, hey, we're going to open it up to the public and things like that, making sure that the uh, marketing is clear, that the safety procedures are clear, that there's clear access points and security and things like that. I could just see that being a PR nightmare if we went that route. Um, but I think really just the takeaway is we felt that it would be pretty important to maintain the status quo at least of kind of two auditoriums, having three gyms, making sure we have the facilities to accommodate our students. And I think we felt like that would best be served by renovating here and uh, building a PK-28. Did I miss anything or misrepresent anything? OK. <laughs> Yes, that's us. <laughs> yeah. I did it last time. We got the flag. Well, we, I guess 
I would yes. say this. Yeah. I mean, we had some fruitful discussions that were a little bit heated, <laughs> but everybody is fine. There's no one no hurt feelings. <laughs> uh, everyone was. Uh, There's only one. We're not really uh, ready to present. <laughs> I feel like we had some great discussions, yes. but. One, I believe one big thought that I took away from Dean was the idea of a field house added on would be a great option to something. Even a field house in the, in the middle of where the middle school would be, that this, there could be a senior center or something like that. That was really, I thought, a, a good um, takeaway. And then also how, if we do use shields, how would it go with the city with tax? That was some big concerns. Majority of the concerns were on the price point. The field house issue was this, if you if you create a, a building K to 8, you're actually combining four gyms. Because mm -hmm. you have a hilltop gym, you have a CH gym, you have two at the middle school. That realistically isn't going to fly to build, so a field house option might be best if you're going to do that. And then you can, we were thinking on the back side, somehow use a uh, community center with that, a field house uh, where you can partition and so on and so forth. But we spent a lot of time talking about the, the structure of that. Yeah. Is that anything else that we missed there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were certainly open to partnerships. I don't know that anyone wouldn't be open to a partnership, but we were we were actually thinking, and this was in its early stages, obviously, but, um, you know, is, is, there, is it possible to have a, a PK6 building at Hilltop, a 7-8 building on the existing uh, middle school, then you tear your middle school down, and that's where you put your field house, and the set, the senior center is in the center of town now, uh, and your fields could be there. That's just an idea. Um, another thing that was very clear, and I got to be careful because these people are my bosses, but uh, <laughs> there was a there was a pretty strong no, non-starter on the new board office, and they just said we can find a place somewhere in the community to work it, kick that can down the road a little bit find offices somewhere within our existing We just, we just kind of thought it would be a clear message that we were more concerned about the kids Boarding. than yeah. the board office mm -hmm. getting a new facility. Yeah. You know, not that you probably don't need one. And you can't find a house for four hundred grand and put $100,000 into it and operate out of that for some time. But just showing the community that the number one thing is the kids. You know, because you've got all those different uh, angles from everybody. Well, the, what's the board office need? You know, why do you need a new place? Why do you need 2,800 feet? Why, you know, let's just take that 1.3 off the table and eliminate that discussion. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got a nice, a nice house down on Paul Murray. You got right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought you could work from home. I mean, I So we're going to take the uh, $1.3 million dollars Buy a house with a pool. Now we got an auditorium. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, I like that idea. Yep. Nice. We, we agree with table six that it, it's easy to get sidetracked. Very, very easy to get sidetracked. So we tried to stay on task and we uh, started with the partnerships because that was our first conversation. And we have really strong um, opinions that YMCA would be awesome if we could partner with them for that, that thing. The concern is timeline wise, is there. You know, can we get that done in time for when we want this project done? So, um, possibly medical center as well um, going on property. So those were possible pop partnership opportunities. Um, was that? The little birdie told us that Reese does on medical centers. Yeah. So that's let's talk about the Reese property. Okay. So then getting on to LFIs, we broke it down by plan and said kind of what we were yes and no. Most of them were pretty much no across the board. Um, additional gymnasium. Uh, with plan two, if it was the K to eight, that could potentially be a co-op with the Y. Um, if not, we feel like it should be built in a way that it could be an opportunity to add one in the future if we gain some funds. But that shouldn't be something that we do up front because, again, we need to show the voters that we're making concessions that, yeah, we watch Cribs and would love their house, but the reality is we can't have it. So um, that's, and then same with the board office, same thing. If we're going to K to eight or really any of the plans, we can use utilize CH Campbell office space is beautiful. We could even do that. Um, but obviously with plan two, the site stuff is necessary. So that needs to be added in because that's not an option. If it went on shields, we don't have an option. So um, that would bring it to that 1048. Plan one, we said no, same thing, don't add a gym yet. Board office, no, swing space, no. 
So that would stay at the 105. Plan 7, board office, no. Relocation, no. We wouldn't want to build it back there. So that stayed at 93. Um, in response to the gyms, um, just to give you an idea, Hilltop Gymnasium currently is only 3,000 square feet. If we went to that K to 6 with the Plan 7, you would get a 7,000 square foot gymnasium. So it, it would actually be equivalent because CH is at 4,000 and Hilltop is at 3,000. So it would be equivalent plus adding 7 and 8 would add another 7,000 square foot gymnasium here at the high school, which would be, is bigger than the, it's 6,800 square feet at the middle school. So it's bigger than even the middle school one. So it really isn't as big of an issue. It would just be relocating and, and adapting. I mean, that's the really big issue here is one of these plans is going to have to go through and we're going, it may not be the way that we always did it, but we're going to have to kind of adapt a little bit here. Um, we are completely split between, well, I'm not, I'm a hard plan seven person, but um, between plan two and plan seven, um, but plan two is a little bit contingent because that's all based on where would it go, what's the cost of everything, the development and everything. But we pretty much all agreed plan one wouldn't work unless we took it into pieces, but we don't know how functional that would be. So, so yeah. Going on Shields property would make it a little bit more palatable with the partners too. Right. We're going to two for this. So we, we also agree it's very difficult to get what we really needed to get done in 40 minutes. Um, and I don't think anything's really going to get resolved. So um, you can see, I don't know if it's really hard to read our chicken scratch back there, but it seemed like in this there wasn't always consensus on any one thing that we spoke about. So um, as far as properties go, we found the most strengths with the Shields Road uh, property, the K-8 on Shields Road. Um, there were some objections uh, to that a little bit. Um, for various reasons, like the topsoil removal, um, things of that nature, but but nothing that couldn't couldn't be overcome. Like um, tax, tax implications. That was the um, other big thing. Right. Uh, but another thing was uh, throughout all of the plans, like demo, demoing three buildings, um, there you know were several people in the group that didn't feel like we should just be throwing away buildings. Um, so if there was the opportunity to resell, maybe we could make money off of them versus just demoing. Um, that was a point, was something to think about, um, and you know the traffic implications of that as well were another weakness. But there's such a huge space there and so much room for expansion. Um, you know, there it, it's nice that you're able to consolidate resources as well as as far as your staff goes, and they're all in one place. Um, and you can build there while the kids are still learning in the other schools and not, not being disrupted by the um, Yeah, I think logistically that was one of the big things. As Speaking as an educator, I think it's if we can build, a prop, build on a property where we're not having to use that swing space, not just to waste the money, but just it's not a great educational environment. Um, so we wanted to try to avoid that. Um, I think we also like the hilltop. I like the idea of building on the hilltop property. We had questions about whether or not that Reese property was going to be available and what that was going to look like. We had some concerns about the gas pipelines. Maybe you can... right. if, I mean, and if that Reese property was available, I mean, I know that's additional cost too. So cost is a thing and we don't want to go up in cost, but you know, that, that gives that a little bit more space to be a more viable option. But it is cramped. There are two pipelines on there. They are high pressure pipelines. So now you want to put more of our kids right next to the pipelines. One of them's owned by the gas company, uh, the distribution company, and they are governed by um, the federal government to maintain their lines, and make sure that they do, um, you know, assessments and maintenance and different things. But the other line belongs to um, Blue Racer, which is uh, a gathering company. And you know they don't have the same government requirements as the distribution and transmission companies do. They're, they're actually both owned under Dominion's parent companies. And they're both governed by the exact same laws and regulations. Federal Code 192, it covers everything. 
Well, I spoke with somebody at Dominion, um, an engineer there, and they told me that um, yes, it is their Blue parent. Blue they're out under the same parent company, Blue but it's a different type of pipeline. Blue Racer carries <coughs> well quality gas. They'll go to a cracker plant that's like in Manaka. Right. And the other line carries distribution quality gas that goes to either Dominion or Columbia Gas. And I'm very, very familiar with that. Thank you. I worked in the industry for 13 years, and I did the inline assessment assessments through the pipeline. My job was to make sure that that pipeline was safe for the community. That was my job. So, do the schools have anyway. gas stove? One of the other properties, the the uh, that there are plant seven, I should say. Um, that's where we're lining up uh, pre-K six and then building on seven eight onto the high school. Um, we had some folks that obviously liked that because of the um, additions of being able to add a gymnasium and some other things onto there, um, sharing some of the same spaces and services. I think just speaking for, as far as credentials, speaking and staff, sharing staff, that I think that would cause an additional expense for the district just trying to staff. Uh, because there's what you what you where you would build things in them where your staff are currently certified and you can't just fire people and get the ones that fit that that lineup that new lineup so that would be something to to, to deal with um and I, I think we generally also were considering like buildings and whether to demo buildings and what we should do with those buildings or should we sit on cbms for a year see if we can sell it see if there's somebody else that wants to repurpose it as opposed to just debating it, demolishing it, and then trying to recover the monies that way, or whether we just try to sit on it. Um, we talked about using Hilltop as a possible admin building, uh, maybe possibly relocating transportation onto that property. Um, that was another uh, option if we had built on, if we decide to use the Shields Road uh, pre-K-8 option. Um, as far as uh, LFIs go, um, we, we didn't really get to that part of the discussion a whole lot, um, but I can, you know, just from a little experience that I have, I know cafetoriums sound like a uh, silver bullet, but they're really not a good cafeteria, and they're not a, not a, a good auditorium either. Um, and for, and I'm, I'm going to, all you know, everything exposed here, I'm a little biased because I am a music teacher in the district, but I, we've been working at a, a deficit as far as, like, performing arts spaces go, and I know that uh, auditoriums are sometimes the most underused buildings in the district. Um, I've seen our auditorium being used here at the high school uh, well. It's been used for classes and, and study halls, um, but like right now we have our, our spring drama being put together, the musical being put together right now, and I know that it's always at a premium. We're always trying to uh, fight for those spaces, and then the middle school God bless them, they do the best they can with the, the facilities that they have. But it is also something to consider, um, to be able to consider the price tag of maybe a, another auditorium. Um, I've been a part of building projects in other districts and other states where auditoriums aren't just what you know to, to, that we have here. Um, I've seen them used as swing spaces and larger spaces where the, like the, half the auditorium is used for basically lecture spaces or large learning areas, which was one of the things that we talked about. Um, those could be, you can add walls where you segment off those and, uh, those classrooms and then open them up for large productions or performances. Kent High School has that set up. I'm sorry, Kent, 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 Kent High, High School. School has that. Yeah, it's a great use of space. Um, and depending on the types of walls that are put in the place, there's not a whole lot of sound bleeding. So um, that, that was also something that we, wanted to throw out there. Oh, and it got the board office was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy you the nicest <laughs> chair we can. We'll get it in board. All right. Sorry, guys. One thing I want to talk about is the taxes lost. It keeps going up as a project. Was it $60,000? $60,000? $60,000? More libraries. But everyone keeps talking about the taxes lost. It's a six and a half million dollar budget. So you can't. Board meeting is healthier. Say that one again. Oh.
it's only sixty to eighty thousand dollars in taxes lost. So I know we've been talking about the shield drill thing that's a detriment, but in the big scheme of things, it's yeah. not right, so one of the benefits of going towards the end is everything I'm about to say you've already heard. Sixty to eighty thousand. I'm adding up to find a place on the plane there. All right, so we tried to stick to a, a basic strengths and weaknesses, you know, just a, a quick overview. And as with everybody else, we got sidetracked before we could get too deep into it. Um, starting with number two, uh, plan two. Yeah, anytime you go to less buildings, it's going to be better calls in buildings like overall, right? Strength of number two. Uh, but the downside of having two buildings, and you know, whether you agree with it or not, some people got an issue with their little ones being with the middle ones and the middle ones being with the big ones. Okay? We want to keep our kids as young as possible, as long as possible, right? Or you to preserve the job. Better. So, yeah, better costs, but then you lose that separation, all right, whenever you go to two buildings. Um, and, yeah, uh, we also were talking about, yeah, there's ways around that, possible ways around that. Again, we're just throwing out opinions. If you were to go around our table, you would get a vote for at least one vote for every project, okay? So we were trying to sort it out. Um, Shield Road tax loss, we've all talked about that, right? There's going to be who knows how much uh, money lost. I don't think it's going to be detrimental, but it's going to be something, right? You probably know a little, a little bit more about that than I would. Maybe you'll talk about that. Um, it's not going to kill the city, but yes, it will. There would be something, right? And then the site location, right? So whenever you take these uh, fifth graders, uh, sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders, put them out on Shields Road, they can't walk anywhere anymore. Right? So basically that centralized location of the middle school where they can watch the green, they can play, they can be out in the city, they can walk to school. You know, they're old enough to do that at that point, and they can't really do that when you put it out on Children's Road, so they lose that. All right, so that's a weakness of uh, plan two. Now, if it were to go to Hilltop, you know, it would be a little bit more. Um, you know, they could walk to maybe McDonald's or something like that, but it's still kind of like on the edge, right? The current middle school is right there in the middle of the city. You can pretty much go wherever, right? So you lose a little bit, no matter where you go. Moving on to one, one. Uh, I guess the the goal of uh, Plan One is it's the one that could most easily be segmented, right? If you go to Plan Two and Seven, you can't really segment them out, right? What are you going to do? Segment off the 15 million that's for really the high school, right? What's the point? That's not going to that's not going to change anybody's mind, right? But you can break one down to where you know maybe we do the middle school now. We do the, the pre-K through four later, we do the high school later. Maybe the, the, the community can eat it in smaller chunks and maybe something gets passed. I don't know, it's the strength of it. Um, CVMS could stay in the same location. Again, they keep that walk of, you know, the, the, the mobility of those kids who can walk now, right? Because it's, it's right there staying in the middle of the, uh, the city. Um, Weaknesses, right? So we talked about it in plan two. We're going to have three buildings, right? So maintenance cost is going to be more. So it's a weakness of the plan, right? And then, um, okay, so it would have to be a three-story middle school. The academic portion. Yes. Okay. So at least at least part of the middle school would have to be three-story if it was built on the back side. And uh, some of us were worried about the uh, like ten houses that are on that road. Um, it's a weakness. Just throwing it out there. Don't throw anything out. All right. And then uh, a strength, uh, still three buildings, right? You know, a lot of them is going to be, hey, it, it was a weakness here, but now it's a strength here. You know, it's going to be a weakness here again, right? Because we're back and forth between the, the buildings, right? So keeping three buildings, you know, you got the kids separated still. You got your little ones with your little ones. They're not mixing with the oldest ones. It's, it's, uh, it's important to some people. All right. Back to seven. Seven is the least expensive right off the gate, right? Plus it's gonna have lower maintenance costs over time because it's only two buildings, right? So whenever it comes to savings, number seven would be your, uh, what you're looking at. Um, however, it can't be segmented out. So even though it's least expensive, the community's gonna have to eat it all at once, right? They're gonna be the whole pot. All right, weakness, back to two buildings, and then strength. Um, the facility planning of it, so like, basically if we're just renovating buildings, what's it going to look like in the long run, right? Is it going to be as durable as a brand new building, right? So we're throwing in, you know, almost the same amount as you would for plan two, and you're not getting any new buildings out of it. So, 
All right, now uh, community centers possible. We, we didn't really talk a whole lot about this. Was, this was kind of like an afterthought as, uh, you know, other people were coming up and we were getting ideas. But yeah, you know, maybe a community center could be added on to uh, the middle school if it was put in the in, you know, centralized location. Or maybe if the middle schools move to, the, the, or we go to the pre-K-8 instead of tearing down the middle school, turn it into a community center. More regurgitation of what's been going on. So, like I said, we weren't adding anything new. Our preferred plan would have been one if you voted, but like I said, there was somebody at the table who would have voted for every plan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll get back to you. Okay, um, we did get finished. <laughs> <laughs> on task. We have two pages. She's seeing all teachers. So <laughs> Sorry. So I'll try to make it quick. I know we're over time. Um, we, a lot of what has already been talked about, we talked about as well. Um, the biggest thing with Shields Road, the positives are there are no interruptions. Um, we tried not to say disruption to the school day. We tried to use the word distraction instead. If you're building where there already is school being um, or going on, it's a clean slate, there's more space. So obviously that just looks beautiful for everybody. It's for you to look at. Negatives, though, is the location, like it's been talked about, taxes, ODOT. Um, it was also brought up about water and sewage and all of that. There's ABC Water Distribution, which is apparently an illegal company, and it's going to be shut down any day. So uh, that's also something that, you know, if we were going to talk about shields, we really need to get more information on that and dive deep into what does the future look like for those types of things. Hilltop, this, sorry, is number two, master plan number two. Um, Positives, you're using what's already there. There are multiple entrances into Hilltop already. We would still like to look into if, you know, if we're building on that side of Hilltop, making an access road to Dartmouth so there is an additional way out. Um, Cardinal's Nest, whether it stays the same or is moved and manipulated so there is still some sort of outdoor classroom we talked about you know soil is going to need to be moved can we use that to build up what's there because it is sinking underwater so that would be helpful <coughs> um one of the lfis to go with hilltop is there's apparently a state program for walkable neighborhoods for walkable schools so we would like to look into that to put um, sidewalks on in the hilltop area um, we have distraction to school day and traffic study. We talked about the possibility, this, I was driving up Hilltop yesterday going to school and I noticed how wide the front yards are. So if we could look into putting a turning lane, they get a little bit more narrow as you get to the top of that last hill and then they go a little bit wider. I know you're like, you know, cringing back there because he lives on Hilltop. Um, but, you know, let's look into the potential to put a third lane, maybe a turning lane. We have talked about two lanes going one way in the morning and then the other two lanes going the other way in the afternoon. There's just a lot of possibilities to be done. Everybody's upset about the possibility of traffic, but there's a lot that could be done to ease some of that traffic in the hilltop site. Um, additional gym, we love it, we want it. I like the field house idea. Um, everybody's mentioning YMCA, we brought up partnering with maybe Southwoods or Mercy Health. You know, if we can't put an additional gym into the building as a school, let's do a field house type thing off somewhere else, partner with one of these places or companies. Um, we are also sorry we don't want to look into the 1.3 million dollar board office and we would like to rename it but we can talk about that later. Um, we think board office is deceiving as Mr. Atway pointed out because it's not the board off the board members don't have offices there and so I think people are confused. A that's bit. why they don't like the idea. That, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's what I said. They think I want to build a corner suite of windows. He's going to pay for it. It should be called administrative offices. Mr. Radway so would not, not, not be in that facility. Then master plan two, one and seven, basically everything that everybody has kind of already talked about. You know, the pros are keeping the grade levels as we are used to, but like it was mentioned, we have to adjust. Everybody, not just in this room, but in the community, is going to have to adjust. We go from multiple buildings down to two. 
elementaries together, CVMS would still be in the center of town, which I think is a big push for what a lot of people want. Um, cons are maintaining three buildings. What's going to happen with the bus routes? And again, distraction during the build time. Master plan number seven, none of us, I'll be quite honest, are really on board with. I think we're more on board with one or two. Number seven is a lot to consider. I think looking into one or two, we think looking into one or two are more feasible, but could be maintained. Okay. <coughs> so that's a So I'm at table one. Um, we stayed on task pretty well, I think. We, we uh, did a pretty good job of uh, kind of zoning in. So um, for the plan number two at Shields Road, uh, we identified the strengths of you know having uh, pre-K through eight all together. Fewer design constraints because, as other people have mentioned, it's a clean slate at that site. And uh, you're bringing it down to uh, two school buildings, so better efficiency of, of maintenance. Uh, the weakness is, is that it's not in the city limits, so there's the concern of uh, losing the tax revenue for the city, um, the traffic study, and access to the site, as well as the uh, somebody brought up uh, the time frame of ODOT. So, you know, when we're constructing these buildings, you know, we're hiring a contractor, we have that time frame. But now we're working with the state and ODOT to, you know, adjust to that time frame. Does that match up? Will that match up? We, we really don't, don't know. My experience when you bring the state <laughs> government into things, the time frame is never going to work. Um, so, you know, kind of, you know, some questions about about that plan. Um, number two at Hilltop, similar strength, uh, PK through eight together. It's a good site. Uh, preserves the neighborhood schools, which a lot of people in the community really favor. Um, utilizes land that the that the uh, school district already owns, um, and it's a location with room for potential partnerships as well. Uh, when it comes to LFIs, pretty much across the board, we welcome, uh, we kind of similarly, uh, we're wondering, you know, how can we repurpose the existing buildings to be administrative offices instead of, you know, carving out uh, and building a new, new office for that. Um, and completely, as far as any kind of community partnership we're all in, we brought up some ideas of inviting maybe handles, you know, uh, to participate. Um, I'm sorry? That was a big one. We won, we won an ice cream bar in the cafeteria. Um, you know, but also I think, you know, YMCA, obviously everybody's kind of kind of big on that. I think if there's there's a lot of option for that uh, to bring them in. Um, you know, it seems like if you name stuff after uh, a DeBartolo York family member, then you get uh, somebody that way. So maybe, you know, we, I, honestly, I think, I think anyone with any connection to any kind of angel donor, you know, get them, get them on the phone and, and start talking about it. Um, similar weakness for Hilltop, um, you know, it's questions about the gas line, um, you know, not just uh, safety related, but how does that actually impact where the layout's going to be, how you can, you know, where you can build, what you can build on it and stuff like that. Um, that land, especially with the tree, the hills, the trees, the wetness, moisture, and stuff like that, how feasible is building extra stuff in what is now, you know, the wooded part of that of that parcel, and then of course traffic issues. Um, you know, there's a big question of can we, you know, pick up the additional parcel? And I think, you know, obviously if we can, you know, either get an easement or some kind of way to alleviate, you know, whether it's going up to Dartmouth or building a new access road if that parcel of land is acquired. That opens up a lot of possibilities there, but those are all just you know questions. We don't really know if that's going to happen. Or, um, and so, plan number one: uh, the uh, PK through four at Hilltop, and the uh, five through eight at CVMS. Strengths for that one, uh, I think the major strength, even though it's a overall a more expensive plan, is that's the one that's most readily segmentable. So when we're talking about that, and I feel like I've mentioned, you know. I don't know when in this process we're going to really dive deep into segmentation and what that means. I feel like I would have rather known more about that now, but basically we're talking about instead of hitting somebody, hitting the community with a $105 million plan, we're asking them for 50, you know, 60 right away. So when you look at those plans, like plan number seven, for example, you can't segment that. 
it's either all or nothing, and it's $95 million, $93 million, whatever it is. So, you know, when you look at the community's resistance to the cost, I think we really all need to consider the segmentability of these plans as, you know, lending a huge uh, part of can it, can it pass? Can it pass the bonus? So we really like the, the fact that this one is really the most readily segmented. We can address the major problem of the middle school first, and then, you know, if we have to come back in five, ten years and get more money for something else, well, you know, then we'll build that case, but it'll be a smaller case at least. So we like that uh, as a strength of this plan. Um, you get the middle, middle school started, which is our top priority. Eliminate an elementary school, you know, better logistics, um, better efficiencies, and also it keeps neighborhood schools, which the community really does. Uh, with this is it's still three buildings instead of two compared to some of the other plans, and overall it's a higher cost, uh, but I think when you figure in the segmentability, it lessens that, that uh, jagged pill. Uh, and then for number seven, um, you know, it is the lowest cost. It brings us down to two schools, so you've got better efficiency there. Um, and it incorporates, you know, available space at the high school, uh, which is not currently being used to its full potential, so you're, you're gaining a lot of efficiency there. Um, weakness is, is that it's not segmentable, as I mentioned, and, um, you know, it's staffing, as was previously discussed, with staff certifications and stuff like that. Um, for, at our group, we kind of, you know, lump that into, you know, maybe it would be a headache, but we still think it would be doable uh, as far as juggling the certifications, you know, maybe those with educational background might know more about that, how, if maybe that's a bigger problem than we think it is, but, um, but yeah, um, you know, just some ideas of, you know, let's try to get handles involved, let's try, you know, to get YMCA involved, uh, honestly, anybody with big pockets that wants to, want some street cred, uh, I mean, we're all for it. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Um, a lot of really good group discussion tonight, um, and as you mentioned, there's probably a lot more that can be done. Um, so we thank you for doing it and staying a little bit longer tonight. Um, Want to just share ahead for what's ahead as we move forward. Next meeting, we have um, an OFCC representative, a senior planner, Bill Prentissel, who will join us virtually to discuss any questions you have. So start to think of those and, and comments that we've had among the process that you can ask directly to him. So he'll be participating for some of the meeting. We do want to allow, again, more time for dialogue and discussion as we move forward with this plan. We also know that um, from tonight's meeting, we will start to capture some of those successes and challenges with these three plans. So we can, again, talk about those collectively in a hopes of, of narrowing down and, and capturing those key themes. We also know an important component that we've all talked about is outside of this group, starting to get some feedback. So we're gonna start to explore how, how we do that, how we start to utilize all of you and your networks to start getting presenting where we are at and where we have arrived at this point in the planning process and bring that back into our group discussions. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. Um, but we do, you know, we're getting down um, to our meetings, you know, as we as we look in the, you know, about a month ahead. Um, we do appreciate your continued involvement, participation in this, um, and look forward to move, um, you know, conducting further dialogue as we move forward in the process. All right, so our next meeting is next week. March 23rd at 6 o'clock, um, and we'll kick off with um, our OFCC representative. Thank you so much for your time today.